What's up, Liron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we'll be looking at works by Harold B. Herbert, um, a very interesting artist with a very interesting life story, I think. So he lived from 1892 till 1945. Um, he was very early on discovered as a very talented uh, artist with the medium of watercolor, his ability to control them and manipulate them to do what he wants. Uh, I also found a couple of pencil sketches of his which are fascinating. I think you're gonna really enjoy them. Now, at some point he was appointed an official uh, war artist uh, for World War II. He was actually sent to document I guess the whole war process um, very interesting and I think it's a worth uh, it's a worthwhile read so there is uh, a lot of information online I'm gonna share in the link down below but in this video obviously we're gonna focus on his artwork so two things I want you to pay attention to one is the simplification he has a very interesting way of simplifying the scene and second is conveying depth he's so good at that he was so good in, in capturing the depth while also maintaining simplicity, which are two things that I love, a classic impressionistic uh, artwork. Kind of reminds me of the very common English type of uh, watercolors, uh, but with his work, uh, he has a bit of an interesting Australian twist to it. So I think you're gonna really enjoy this one. And with that being said, let's get started. So first painting uh, really conveys what I think is the essence of his work, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's depth and simplicity. So there is plenty of depth here and it's beautiful. Uh, the way the mountains show in the background, I love that. So we have this contrast between the values. This is lighter, it's back there. Uh, the trees are a little darker here, especially this one. And then we also have a contrast in temperature. So blue at the back, kind of a brown, warm brown in the front. Uh, and this is what makes his artwork so unique and so beautiful. And this is really one of my favorites. And you want to make sure you stick around to the end because the last painting I'm going to show you is my probably number two which is really, really interesting. Uh, maybe even number one, not sure yet. Um, but the way he did this is beautiful. Now, if you look at this part with the fallen tree trunk, or maybe it's the, the roots, um, it seems like he is using some opaque paint. Uh, he could be achieving that effect uh, using um, mixing white into his paints, and then it creates this sort of uh, an, an opaque uh, feel to it, as you can see here. Uh, also in the background with these, maybe it's a fence or I don't know what, but it, this, this looks beautiful. Uh, and even if you look at the leaves, he has this masterfulness of making it, nothing is repetitive, which is really important with trees and other organic um, shapes. I don't want to say organic, but more natural shapes. Um, and it's really important. And, and here everything is, feels so organic in that way. Uh, so and and here the more you get to the edges of the painting the less details there are But here you can actually see the leaves not to talk about a variety of paints and colors here. It's more of a um, uh, um, You know an artificial kind of green here. It's more of a muted down green So just so much and so much prettiness going on around I could talk about this painting for hours So now we're gonna move on to the next one. Uh, so here we have uh, another beautiful one. Uh, this is a bit of a, s not necessarily one of my uh, favorites, but I can see the beauty and you can see the opaqueness. So maybe he mixed a bit of gouache here. Uh, actually, I'm starting to think that. Uh, let's move on now. I love, love, love this. The, whenever there is a bit of, uh, you can see all the primary colors, which is something I always love. You know, the reds are very dominant, then the yellows and blues, creating the greens and then just the greens, then there's purples you can see a lot of color colors and a lot of saturation here, which I absolutely love. Um, not to talk about the subject matter, which uh, is very interesting. You know, the chickens here are eating off the ground. It's sort of a country house or a ranch or a farm or whatever it is. There's even a um, laundry lines here running with pants maybe and uh, I don't know what that is but that's really really cool and then we have this tree that's really framing up the entire scene very very nicely uh, let's move on this is a, a, a bit of a more abstract one but it is quite impressionistic and you can tell there is a major tree trunk here a lake some reflections maybe a bit of a sunset round sunset hour of the day I uh, absolutely love this one. And here I wanted to show you a couple of his sketches. So we have one now and then two more later. Um, this is from Morocco, probably Marrakesh, I would say, but who knows. Um, and there is, they had this nice, uh, beautiful arcs there. I saw them in, in many scenes from Morocco. Um, and he's also, that shows you really how uh, good of a control he has over the basics. Because there is no paint here, there's no color 
All there is is just basic composition, basic sketching skills. I don't remember, I don't, I can't really tell if it's pencil or pen. It looks a bit like pen. Um, the cross hatching is beautiful. It works with the direction of the, the sub subject. Uh, it wraps around, quote unquote. So just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, here, another scene that proves how the magic really is in simplicity. Uh, if you look at all of these, uh, all of the details really are in the bottom third. Then there's just a couple of clouds here. Nice, beautiful granulation in the sky. But then when you go down, you see the, the ocean, some uh, land. Maybe this is a bay kind of area. You see how the water pours into the land. There's a bit of a sparkle going on. Let me zoom in a bit for you. A bit of a sparkle around this area. And then we have these trees and the house. And it's also fresh. Nothing is too overworked or, or, you know, feels like the technique is ruined by uh, dabbling with it too much and dabbing the paint too much and nothing, none of that, which is what I love the most. I love the fresh look. Um, here we go, another beautiful scene. And again, he's so clever in the way he builds these, these scenes up because he builds them in a way work process wise that he doesn't need to overwork a thing. So this mountain in the background or mountains or whatever that ridge is, it just paints around that tree here, uh, leaving some gaps. Uh, and that way you can just put them all in one go. His, a lot of his work really feels a la prima. Like just one go, goes for it, and it's a lovely result. And one more thing I will say is I'm missing a bit of red in this scene. There is a bit of in the brown of the tree and the ground. But what I do love is that he does show the yellow very well in within the greens. Okay, this is something that's important for me. And you'll notice that I do that a lot because it is important for me. Uh, next up, uh, two more pencil sketches or pen sketches. So we have this one. Notice how the cross hatching really follows the direction of the tree, which is, I think, great. I think this is really... I'm learning a lot from this. I may do a study of his, of, of his pencil sketches because... Um, it takes a lot of understanding to make that so it feels like it wraps actually around the, the branches. And he really is good at conveying this. It feels like the cross hatching follows the, the shape of the, the object, which is really um, something that I don't do personally. And this is really an important lesson for me. Oh, and one last thing, sorry. Uh, the, the background here with the trees slowly receding into the background, no need to do any cross hatching on the farthermost mountains. They just kind of sit there. Um, I love his sketching style too. Another one, really beautiful. So, okay, so yeah, so this is probably pen. This is, uh, this looks more like pencil. You can see that the lines are smudgier or it could be something else like graphite or charcoal, I don't know. Um, but it is just beautiful. The trees, clear composition, very interesting. Some clouds, some sky, nothing in excess. One thing I did think about is, you notice how the sky is obviously lighter than the clouds, or maybe this is trees, I don't know, but or but he doesn't cross-hatch the entire background. You don't need cross-hatching here in the sky because that will be confused with the tree branches and the leaves. So he just doesn't do it. He just chooses the subject of the paint and the sketch and just shows that. You don't need to show every single thing. And I think looking at these sketches is a strong indication of that. And that's something that I love. And I'm really learning a lot from this. Initially, I didn't even think about it. But while talking about it to you, it made me think about all of these things. Here's a very interesting painting as well. Um, a very unique color scheme. There's a lot of pure blue here that I don't know how it got here. But um, the colors here, are, I think, are very unique. Uh, it's all sepia-ish. Uh, and that's not the photo quality or anything like that. You can see there's a white border here. That's Actually, the paint he used probably did an underpainting of a, of a brown or sepia or something like that. And it looks fantastic. Really, I love this. Uh, and all of these details on the tree branch, which is really hard to get, you know, to make it look spontaneous and real and nature as uh, natural, as we mentioned earlier, and organic is really hard. And you really sucked into the scene. Even the, the oranges, I guess, or apples, or it could be many things here. Uh, I think oranges, you can tell that's what they are. Um, it could be other different similar orange-like fruit, um, but it really pulls you into the scene and I'm actually curious to see the real thing and how uh, and what it looks like and I really can feel the conveyed atmosphere from this painting. Uh, next up, a dog scene, 
another beautiful one. I am wondering about the sea level here that's a little higher. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. I haven't even thought about it before, but uh, maybe just the ship is in the background and that way it creates this, I don't know. Uh, but I love the, especially the effect of the ripples in the water. Um, and again, notice here a lot of paint that feels quite opaque, though it doesn't have to be, I don't know. Um, two things I really love about this. So first off, as I mentioned, this, the... Um, okay, now I figured it out. Yeah, that's the, the, the dock and it's taller than the ocean and that way it creates this difference. I don't know. Uh, but in any case, two things. One is the ripples that I mentioned. And notice how some brush strokes are broken. They're dry. Like here, I'm going to really zoom in for you. Here and here and here. So I love that. And another smart thing he does is look how he kind of bunches up together these warm uh, colors alongside co cool colors. Here as well, this effect of maybe rust due to the waves and the constant, um, um, constant, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, friction with water and, and, you know, the water touching the dock. So you get this beautiful, beautiful wet and wet effect that feels like real rust. And the, the pencil sketch looks beautiful as well. You can see it through the, the painting. And it is simple. The way he approached this is simple. It's just one or two probably two washes and that's it. I love this kind of thing. Uh, here's another beautiful one. Notice all the negative painting. That's so complex and getting it fresh and good looking is so, challenge, uh, so challenging. And um, one more thing, notice the background here feels very blurry. And I don't know if that's the photo quality or actually the painting, but if it is the painting, then that's really beautiful um, because you really feel like this is way back there and this is the front. So his sense of depth is just crazy. Here's another one. Such a light scene. There's just this uh, willow tree, I believe. And, uh, and then at the back, this mountain, very, very light, barely visible. But you do get a hint of maybe smoke. Maybe there's a house here. Maybe there's a small cabin uh, with smoke coming out of it. I don't know. It's just such a good way of conveying the scene and telling the story and notice how light of a glaze he used here and all of the things in the background and you know he could have exaggerated the original he could have been loyal to the original but the end result is beautiful and it's something you take back home and you're proud of that's if i produce something close to that i'm really happy with it um, and now we're getting close to the end actually so here's another one we've seen quite a lot of scenes like this um, but I just love it so I wanted to include it. this could be the same scene we've seen in the beginning only maybe from a different angle and different time of day I'm not sure about that um, and lastly this I think this is the last one this is probably my second or first uh, picks pick out of all of these and it's probably because I like the light and shadow conditions. You can see the sharp contrasty shadows on the trees and on the ground. Compare that to the very first painting I showed you with the blue in the background that was more against the light. And this is the different effect you get. So I kind of like both. Um, even the trees here that cast beautiful shadows on the house or cabin or shed or whatever that is. And then the, the background this feels more like, um, I don't know, um, close to evening that you start seeing some red there because of the strong sunlight. And then there's strong contrasty shadows. A lot of opaque touches of paint here. If you notice on the tree trunks here, this is probably opaque paint. This here and there, this is definitely opaque paint. You can tell because it's there's no way to get that with masking tape or, you know, probably he was able to preserve. So you see here, these are preserved highlights. And then here he wanted to add more, so he just added opaque paint. And it looks beautiful, and it really works together, it fits together. And you don't even have to think about these things. And then one more thing I really like about this one is the, the sharp palm tree like or palm tree. I'm not sure, it's either palm tree, palm tree or something close. But the palm tree like sharp blades of leaves. This is just beautiful. Really, really one of my favorites. This one, the, the first one. Uh, so in any case, I hope you enjoyed seeing paintings by this really impressive artist. I really encourage you to read about him. I will put a link down below uh, for a, an article talking about his his story. It's really interesting. Uh, and this is it. With that being said, we can wrap up this vid. So this is it for this episode of Painting Masters. I hope you enjoyed this. And as you can see, there is a lot to learn from his work. Uh, what I think I will do is grab one of the paintings that I love the most and maybe make a study for them because 
just doing it the way someone else did it can shed a lot of light on how they did it, why they did different choices. Then you can incorporate it into your own style. So I'll probably do that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me rank higher on YouTube and get the video to more people. And also, if you still haven't subscribed, I know there are a lot of new subscribers aboard. So if you're one of them, I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.